Hi, and welcome back to another edition of Easy Theory. So today we're going to continue from where we left off. Last time we were talking about this machine and I asked you, is there a simpler way to represent this machine in an English description? And one way that you can think about this is that this machine will accept all of the strings that are of odd length. So we can say that this machine accepts not only the strings of odd length, but exactly the strings of odd length. And why can we say this? So the set of all strings of odd length. Why can we say this? Well, if you notice these two states, Q0 and Q3, well, let's call those the even states and the other two the odd states. Well, if we're in Q0, right when we start up, we have seen zero characters. If we read a zero or a one, then we'll be either in Q1 or in Q2, which is a final state. If we read one more from either one of these two, then we'll be in one of these two. And if we read one from one of these two, we'll be in one of these two, etc. So therefore, we can conclude that if we're in Q1 or Q2, we have seen an odd number of characters. And I don't care which one necessarily, but if we're here, we have seen an odd number of characters. So we can actually make a really simple uh, uh, machine for this. And it's really similar to the one that we saw before. So here, instead of having the start state being the final state and Q1 not be the final state, I just flipped which one was final. When we had the Q0 was final, that was the set of all even length strings, but here we want odd length strings. So the answer is yes, there is a simpler DFA, uh, a machine that we'll be talking about here called the DFA, which has two states right here. So what I want you to be able to figure out is, is there a concise explanation of how can we come from this machine right here to this machine down here? Is there a way that we can convert this machine, try to eliminate some of its states if possible, and come down to this machine down here? Or do we have to be able to think about this and to be clever and to say, ah, oh, well, this accepts odd length strings, so therefore we can make an odd length machine? Or is there a way that we can just break this down without even having to think about it? So I'll leave you to think about that. But if I wanted to, for example, provide this to a computer, well, I need to be able to pro provide it in some format that the computer can understand, obviously. I can't just say, well, here's a picture of one. Now figure out what the, the set of strings that it, it recognizes is. So we need to be able to write this down in a formal way. So we're going to do exactly that. So what this machine, as I alluded to earlier, is called a DFA. And what is that? It's called a deterministic. So the deterministic comes from the fact that every state has uh, every possible output on it. So for in Q3, for example, there is a zero and a one transition, and there's no um, two transitions with zero on it. There's exactly one of each character. The second uh, qualification is that it's finite. Finite means that there's only a finite number of states. You can have any number you want, but as long as it's finite. And the actual formal name of the machine itself, be, that the fact that it's a machine is called an automaton. So uh, we can call it a machine if we want, but that's just the term everyone uses. So a, a DFA, and we're gonna abbreviate it as DFA, because it's just cumbersome to say deterministic finite automaton a thousand times. So, so how do we specify a DFA here? Well, we have to give the, these five parts. So it has the five following parts. And what are those? Well, we need to be able to specify, well, what the states are in the first place. So we call those capital Q, which is a finite set of states. Another one is, well, we got to be able to specify on the transitions themselves what the transitions are. Are they A and B or 
zero, one, two, or what? What are the transition labels? So this sigma right here is the set of those labels, and we call that the alphabet. So more specifically, the input alphabet, because it deals with the input string. So it's a finite input alphabet. So that's the term that we'll use. Delta here, well, we got to specify, well, how do we actually get, how do we use the transitions? If we're in a certain state, where do we go on each of the transitions? Well, delta is the function that tells us what actually happens. So delta is the transition function. And I'll specify more about it in a second, so I'll leave a little bit of space. Um, we have to specify, well, which one of these states is the start state, so I'm going to call it Q0 is a member of this set Q that we have defined earlier. So it, the state has to be a state, well, and we're going to designate it to be the final, uh, the, the start state. So Q0 is the start state. By the way, um, just because I use the term Q0 here doesn't mean that the DFA has to be called Q0 for its start state. The name of the state can be anything that you want. So Q0 is just the formal name that we'll give it, but you can call it anything you want, as long as there's a, a given specified start state. And also, we need to specify what of the states are actually the double circle states, the accepting or final states. So we can have any number of final states that we want. We could have zero final states, every state being final, or something in between. So I'm going to have f be in some subset of states. It's just a subset. Just pick some of the states, either zero or all of them or something in between. So f is the set of final states. So now more about this transition function. Well, what in order let's just look at this function this transition right here, Q3 on 1. Well, in order to actually execute this transition, well, first off, we need to be in the state Q3 and we need to uh, read a 1 off the input. If I have one of those two not failing or, or sorry, one of those two failing, then I can't execute that transition whatsoever. So I need both of those to occur. So delta here is actually a function from Q times sigma. Why is this here? This is here to say the state, the, the transition function needs two things. It needs the state that presumably the one that you're in right now and the character that you're reading off the input. So Q is just here, when I write Q, I just mean it picks one of the states, something in the set Q. And here, when I write sigma, I'm just picking one character out of the alphabet. I'm just picking any one. And what do we know? Well, if I know those two things, then I know where to go. The function will tell us what the state is actually we're going to, and nothing else happens. So what it outputs here, so that arrow, if you don't know, means output, it outputs a state, well, again, it could be any of the states. So here, I'm going to output Q. And one more thing is that, is that delta is a total function. So what in the world does this mean? Total just means that there is no input pair that is not defined. So it can't be like Q3 has no transition on 1, for example. So like if I said the state I picked here is Q3 and the input was 1, then if there wasn't a transition like that, then there's no defined state where it actually goes to. So the fact that it's total just means that every possible pair of state with input combination is defined somewhere. So some state is defined, maybe they all go to the same state, but all that matters is that they're all defined, which makes this truly deterministic. Because if you're in any state with any possible input, you are going to a state. There's no way for you to get stuck, which is nice. So let's actually define 
the DFA that we have up here in a formal way. So I'm going to copy it down here. So let's define this formally. So in order to define a DFA in a formal way, we need to specify the five parts. Q, sigma, delta, Q, zero, F. So Q here is the set of states, which are Q0, Q1, 2, and 3. So I'm going to write that with set notation, so with curly brackets and commas separating the names. They don't have to be in order, but I like putting them in order. Well, what is the input alphabet? we got to specify what the characters are on the transitions. Well, there's a 0 here and a 1 here, and I don't see any other characters on the transitions. So sigma here is 0, 1. I'm going to skip over the transition function for now. I'll come back to it. Well, Q0 here, well, what's the start state? Is the, is the one that has no, the arrow coming in from nowhere. So Q0 is the start state. So Q0 is the start state. What are the final states? Well, remember that F is a subset of Q. So therefore, F must be a set right here. So I, again, write it with set notation. Well, what are the things in the set? Well, it's the ones with double circles. So those are Q1 and Q2. I don't include the other states because they uh, are single circled. So then, how do we define the 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 delta the transition function? So here's one method that I really like doing, which is something called a transition table. So what this does is it compactly represents in a formal way what these transitions do. So what we are going to do is something that looks like this. So down each of the rows is going to correspond to a state. So those the states are Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3, because th those are the states. And as the columns, those are the input symbols. So I'm going to put the inputs here. And we know that those are 0 and 1. So I'm going to put 0, 1 here. And what I'm going to do in each of these positions is I'm going to put the state that I go to if I was in Q0 before and I saw a 0. I'm going to put in this cell right here whatever the state is in that row with the, the symbol in that column, where do we go? So on Q0, on input 0, looks like we go over to Q1. So I'm going to put Q1 in this position. What about Q0 on, on input 1? Well, Q0 on 1 takes us down to Q2. So I put Q2 in that position, in that cell. Q1 on input 0, it looks like we come back to Q0. On input 1, we come up from Q1, we go to Q3. On, from Q2, on input 0, we go to Q3. On input 1, from Q2, we go up to Q0. And from Q3, on input 0, we go to Q2. And on input 1, from Q3, we go up to Q1. One other, so this is a formal specification of this picture of a DFA here. This is a formal representation of what this DFA is. Another way to visualize what a total function is, if you didn't get it before, is that when you make this table right here, there are no unfilled entries in this table. That's just another um, viewpoint on what a total function actually is. So I hope that was interesting. Leave a comment below if you were able to find this a different way. Please like and subscribe to the channel. There are plenty of links in the description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, I'll see you next time.